Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're once again taking a look at Project Cold War. This time I wanted to check out Punch. Uh, Punch is a interesting character concept because Punch is sort of a support defender. And we're going to take a look at the loadout and talk about the playstyle loop and show some games. Uh, the beta, I mean, the uh, closed alpha is coming to a close, so this is all sort of after the uh, the servers are closed. So I will not be able to like verify or look at this until the next session that we can test the game out. But it is fun to discuss the game enough so we can have further um, feedback. So um, I'm envisioning people coming and watching this video and enjoying it and considering possibilities and as we move closer to the game being out any comments that are made or any any ideas that it might uh, in, you know excite in players is always good i i have met many who work for wargaming and i really appreciated the people that i met so i just feel like there should be a way for us to celebrate vehicle combat in a way that is uh, not so maintenancey uh, and I feel that other games do have a lot of maintenance required uh, around them this seems to just allow you to pick up and play a character that you want to play without going through a, a tier of choices that sort of you're leveling up your understanding of the concept I this seems like just encouraging the player to I'll pick, uh, you know, uh, agents that they enjoy. So, Punch. Punch is a support defender. And with the features, upgrades, and perks available, we're going to talk about potential playstyles. So, for we uh, for the features, we've got Support Master. So, this is the abilities. It, in, it quadruples your energy regen for 15 seconds after dealing 1,200 damage in 30 seconds. And this is obviously because, single shot of course, uh, we are an ability based defender. So the first one is Volcano Mine System. It uh, obviously lays out mines and then when you drive over mines you take damage. Wow. You know, it's uh, exactly as you would expect and it, I, think it, I think with mines it has a high probability of tracking. So it seems to track very consistently. But this is all me based on my play. Uh, and then the other ability that you can use is Demolition Charge. Now, Demolition Charge sends out two sort of direct barrage rockets that will deal damage. But it's a really big telegram because, or it is a very telegraphed effect because it's so big and bold. So with the enhancement to mobility, as I have encouraged, so I'm sure many people have encouraged that, and tanks are known for their mobility, that is difficult because it allows players to react to it. So it actually, I end up doing more potential damage with the mines, I think, because they're so small and um, you would never look for them uh, in active combat. Now you might pay attention over time, but right now uh, everyone drives over them. You just have to have enough energy to throw out the mines. So that's a part of the support or the um, ability-based agents, they need to have energy regeneration to enable their gameplay. And uh, as far as perks are concerned, we've got a repair kit perk, 15 seconds is pretty cool, field ability cooldown reduction, or acceleration improvement. Now the acceleration might actually be really nice because as you know, defenders are normally not the most mo mobile of the agents, so making this a really mobile defender might work in your favor. I have chosen repair kit. Repair kit's really nice. Uh, we also take master engineer. You probably heard this before from me. It is amazing. I don't know why any defender would never, you know, why a defender would choose anything other than this beats me. The reason I think it's so good is because it enables the ability for you to retreat and recharge. Very similar to a Master Chief from Halo, the gameplay loop with the shield. And that is so strong in a game where 
being on the map and having presence is really empowering and you can do a lot of damage so and you can come from a different flank so as long as you're alive the player must consider and master engineer recovers your ability to always stay healthy and ready for detracking it's just really nice the fact that the detrack protection and the heal over time exists on one ability is kind of empowering for defenders so i would just continue that uh backtrack we've got reduced track engine repair time that's pretty more that's more just a manual improvement or i guess a passive improvement this is obviously an active choice from you but you should actively be aware of when you can spare a couple seconds to heal and afford to not have the ability to protect your track. You know, at distance, uh, I understand that the game doesn't allow you to disappear like World of Tanks, um, but at range, it's really hard to do as much damage. That's just the facts. Uh, but we have, obviously, backtrack and then improving your ram damage bonus, reducing ram damage. That also might be something that you would improve. I've, as you can see, I've chosen to pick the RAM ability. I am enjoying ramming uh, tanks that specialize in it, so I would be curious to try it for sure. I certainly would definitely be up for trying a full RAM build or something like that. Uh, improves gun stabilization when you're shooting. Uh, that's great. Passive uh, fire protection and stuff. Cool. I don't really catch on fire as frequently as other tanks, so I wouldn't worry. Widen your view, peripheral vision, we're familiar with these options. So, punch, support. Initially, punch felt very underwhelming. Everything costs a lot, and it's slow, and doesn't really survive very well. Without upgrades, this is not a very fun tank to play. It's one of the least fun defenders to play without upgrades. With upgrades, it becomes more fun. But uh, for the first option, you can basically choose increase hit points, but reduce in the AP uh, protection. AP is the most common shell that will come in. So with the most common shell giving you the least amount of benefit, it's really all about the hit points or heat and HE. Heat and HE aren't really in the game, but there are mechanics that do those. So yeah, when those mechanics are done against you, I guess you benefit. Uh, now this is half the hit points, but... 5% more AP protection, which, of course, the most common shell, you would expect that to give you the most value, but you're getting less hit points. So it's all what you think, and honestly, no one's really firing on the sides like this frequently. They're looking for all the, the cute spots more near the rear and the track. So honestly, the midpoint in the this tank, I don't really see benefit one way or another. You might honestly go with damage reduction. This is more for sort of like I would say this is more for like rockets and stuff and that's more likely to casually hit your side than AP casually hitting your side I'm more likely as a player to go for the um, final drive or the tra uh, or the um, guns or the engine or the ammo just me so honestly I would probably choose the TR1 just for the more hit points because you will be repairing your health so much, you can afford to have lots of hit points, and it just allows you to stay longer. Uh, the second option, we've got uh, engine protection, so makes it more resist resistance to crit. Engine hit points, so helps your engine hit points, or we can just generally improve the guns. I choose generally improving the guns. Yeah, you're a support defender with abilities, but your gun is still always there, so please always use it. Then we can choose base acceleration with traversal speed. So this basically makes it handle better on the move. Or we can choose more protection. So this is more stationary. But it does give us 300 hit points where the torsion bar doesn't. So it's more, are you a stationary player or are you an active mobility? I feel like active mobility, you just got to continue leaning on that. So I would go base acceleration traverse, but that's just me. Slot four, we've got more mobility or the ability for us to be more defensive, like ideal hull position. So if you're an active mobility player, you would probably go for the first option. If you're a more stationary player and more likely to be a defender, 
the second option might work in your favor. Because as long as you can place your um, ideal hull position, it doesn't really matter how far you're moving away. As it, if the movement doesn't help you, you need to help yourself in other ways. So obviously the health would go a long way for that. But I think mobi mobility is a power move and going a ram build, you need to go mobility. For the slot five option, they have given us a reticle zoom and spotting. So obviously range emphasis or a mobility option. So they're really pushing the stationary versus um, movement. I choose to make the tank move better. So it just improves the turret traverse speed and the aiming speed. So on the move, it's just going to feel more um, effective and then coming to a stop that will be more useful for that play style. Uh, it's nice to have the options. Now for slot six, we've got RAM focused and it's a minesweeper. That's a nice feature bonus. Or you got to deal with um, 150 more hit points and screen protection near the front. So basically gives you lower plate protection that reduces damage taken. I have chosen the RAM build and the obvious benefits are there. Just makes it more advantageous to ram. Uh, I think having a faster repair kit makes it more advantageous to ram because you will always be losing a little bit of hit points regardless of how you play. And the more hit points you, you have, the more likely you are to take a ram. So I just think all in all, it all has good synergy. For the first option, eh, if you're a hold down position and you're, you're waiting stationary and the game might slow down, closer to release, then yeah, we might go this bit, this plan. For slot seven, you get a chance to in upgrade your energy regeneration for the first time, I must say. <laughs> ah, an ability-based defender. It should not take until slot seven for there to be an ability benefit, I, in my opinion, for gaming. Um, for the second option, you can enhance your shell damage. So this is this is for someone who's leaning more on, I would guess, the longer range stationary play that is relying on the guns and the unique rate of fire that it has. But uh, you have to get close-ish to use your ability, so you're giving up a lot for a little. I just think you need to enhance this because you're already running dry all the time. So, slot eight, we pick between tracks and tracks. <laughs> um, it's just how you protect your tracks with health or with a repair after the fact. This does make your traverse speed better. I would go with traverse speed personally. But both options are interesting. Uh, the eighth, the ninth one, actually, right? Yeah, the, the ninth. Well, the ninth one is Demolition Rocket. So this is your throw out ability. Uh, it improves that and it just makes it better. Um, so this is leaning heavily on that ability and it makes it really deadly. And I don't know if it looks different. Um, I have played against a level 10, I know. And I think he had the rocket ability, so he would default take this or making your guns more Ability. So I would lean heavily on making the abilities better because it, it is very deadly and it is nice to be able to throw something over a solid cover, which you can't necessarily do with a gun. And then slot 10, we can enhance the number of minefields that are placed in the world to four and improve the energy slightly. Or we can basically double the number of rockets that we can send out. Which one would you choose? Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> so that's the one I would go if I had enough points in time. Uh, but yeah, you could put out more mines and be more annoying, maybe. But I think the mines are limited in the distance that they can be and the angle that they can be placed. Now, if you can rotate the mines a little bit for the placement, that would be really great UI improvement, in my opinion. Because right now you can only place it like perpendicular to your position no crossing the team so it's really not ideal for laying the best minefields and it would be really 
really nice if you can make it better but i can imagine that players will figure out like places to place angles to stand and place them effectively quickly quick enough so that might be just the annoyance you'll have to deal with mines so much and mines really slow you down whether you want to admit it or not they're slowing you down so it's a perfect kill box for people to attack after you take mine damage but i'm gonna have more fun with the rockets right now now punch is a very interesting ag uh, agent and uh that's why i spent time talking about it for the consumables you've got repair kit which of course you'll take energy boost which of course you will take as a basically a the closest thing to a spellcaster in this in uh, this world uh, and then you have a conditional which will be fire or um, stem pack it doesn't really matter I uh, if it's a fire you can heal a lot back uh, so you might just enhance your guns to be even more threatening it's a uh, I haven't really died to fire too much and if I and this has really great repair kit so we're gonna show some gameplay with really great repair kit all right and bonus we are on the new map the single day test map aircraft carrier which is fine it's obviously closed alpha i'm actually very excited to just be able to see it but uh, you know everything here is probably just to have an idea of the gameplay i would be shocked if this map doesn't go under many different changes and iterations because it's just so new but uh, yeah we're playing punch punch is a defender so really good repair kit cooldown uh, above average armor I mean, obviously we're pretty fast as well but we're not the fastest agents in the game uh, we're fast enough to get into position at this uh, bridge point looks like it's like a bridge to keep the well, it effectively is a bridge to keep the aircraft carrier from leaving. So I'm going to mine up the bridge. Obviously the texture work. Don't care about the textures, just the gameplay. So we got this enemy. He's moving over the mines and not very good. I had to wait on my rockets, but once I get them, they work very well. Jaeger finishes off, of course, but we did have a really nice mine-rocket combo. And... You know, as the player, driving through the minefield is not the only thing that you have to consider. Because Punch can set off all the mines as it lands on the mines. So you need to be aware that if you're right next to the mines, that's also bad too. But we're able to get back really quickly. And, uh, you know, it's pleasant to drive through the building. Uh, enemy Titan, he's moving up for some reason. We, of course, miss. We have enough energy, which is nice on spawn to activate. We put one set out, but he drives between it. The indicator is really awkward, someone's firing on our rear. Or we're just trying to detract and. Little, little knock. Just a touch. Uh, the repair kit. Watch this repair kit. Oh, oh, we got an enemy here. But 20 second repair kit. 20 seconds to um, come off the cooldown again, and it heals us to full. Uh, I mean, a really awesome repair kit. Get out of here. Gosh, of course, of course, Chopper. So bad situation, Jaeger. Get out of here, Jaeger. Just gotta throw rockets out. I felt like I was just dead, but my repair kit is back up, so I can use it again. It's very hard. Some of the defender players will be like zombies. They just come back from the dead. And uh, Jaeger probably feels like, yeah, I got good damage. But no. See, I just have to be able to sustain the crit, repair the crit, punish the player, the keep crew. him. And yeah, right now the aircraft don't seem to have any hip boxes or anything. I don't know if they will blow up or be like solid cover. Another ram. Deuce, take that. I don't even have the ram build at this point, but it's still a really good ram. Uh, the punch, punch can definitely punch above in that way. So mobility, very nice to pick up on punch for multiple reasons. The ability usage 
requires that you position your tank quickly into ideal. And look at this, look at this. Yeah, the aircraft carrier has elevators. And you can get through from both sides and there's one base capture up here. Obviously all work in progress, but it's just fun to be able to drive around these things. I'm gonna attempt to put out some mines. You can look how far we can send them out. Obviously, they're so far away. It's oh, there's someone behind us. There is someone behind us. Now you won't see me use it in this game. Ooh, nice. Oh, not nice. Uh, oh. But you could drive off the tip of the the bow of the carrier and land on that A point. Uh, and later on, actually, I think in this game we're gonna have the B point be demolish or damage and you'll see that the aircraft carrier has um, some dynamic gameplay element to the map that comes into impact whenever that occurs so let's just see if we get to that point but this is a building that's overlooking a point I think there's a mirror on the opposite side feels very familiar to me as a player of Halo <laughs> or I guess any any building games, they always make them like overly simplified for obvious traversal. A point is being captured by us, or being captured by them, we already have it. But I'm just trying to check this out for the first time. I've never, you know, this is the first game I've ever gotten an aircraft carrier. Man, look, B point, of course. It's gonna go off. And uh, you actually don't know this. I actually gave you a little bit of a hint on what to expect, but obviously I'm aware. B point is the point on top of the carrier, and by it going off, I need to stay away from that. And we're just gonna fight off to the side, and oh gosh, he crits us really nice. And knocks us out, and B point gets cleared out, and now we can capture it. Hopefully I can get a shot of the carrier now after B-Point. Uh, because it will be different, I promise you. Uh, you'll know it when you see it, how different it is. But we're going to head over towards A-Point. Looks like there might be a fire support for the enemy over trying to get behind, so I'm going to get behind him. Just going to mess with him send out stuff and <laughs> you can place it on someone and then follow up and damage so that actually works quite well to send out all of your mines on top of someone and then immediately and I mean immediately rocket the area where the mines just laid underneath them it actually works pretty well I'm not gonna lie uh, but A's under conflict we are dealing with this enemy who Let's go into the helipad for some reason, or I, I guess the helipad, that's obviously a decoy. It's just trying to catch him. Uh, we missed our mines, and uh, yeah, someone tracked us. I think he did. Oh, we got him tracked, and oh, the missiles. Oh, so disappointing. <laughs> Miss point blank missiles. Then we take it down. And our repair kit's off cooldown. Of course it is. But we're taking too much damage, so we're just gonna... Oh no, get out of the way! No, no, no! I mean, really need to get in cover! Oh, that was way too close. But we're in cover. That's good. Still conflict. Now, look at what has happened to the map. The bow of the carrier has collapsed and formed a bridge. And I'm over here like, whoa. I now have bridge cover on the bridge. Another bridge on your bridge. So I'm thinking after we take A, of course we're gonna go on this bridge. I'm just trying to hold it and uh, obviously repair. And our repair kit's almost off a of cooldown. But yeah, look at us. Oh yeah, we can go up to B point. No, actually. I don't know, maybe we can go over to B point. So let's just go. I'm just gonna drive through. Oh! Can't go up to B point. So effectively, once B point is captured and captured for a long enough period of time, 
you can no longer use the traversal mechanic from B to A because the bow will be broken off. Now, A point can use it as cover, but A point cannot go up to B. A goes into a pit of doom too. So B and A are now separated forcefully. So it's an interesting dynamic feature of the map. And just as this map is ending, I drive over to what's labeled on the map, submarine. So uh, I was like, oh, there is a submarine over here. Split in half. Ship players are probably happy with that. <laughs> but yeah, we're just gonna capture the base and uh, we'll see if we survive long enough. But it's been a real pleasure to play on an aircraft carrier. It's cool that Punch has that nice one-two combo and the better you get with punch, the better you can get with that combo, and it's a nice opener, for sure. Or closer, whatever you like. The repair kit is definitely a huge part of what makes punch um, really difficult to deal with, because uh, basically, if you don't kill punch off, punch is gonna be back at full health, waiting to deal with you again. And unless you're at full health, Eventually, that's going to not be a sustainable assault, and you're going to have to disengage or die. It's really that simple. So, yeah, I think it's unfortunate that Punch has energy enhancement abilities so late in the upgrades. I would like that to occur earlier for Punch, but once you upgrade, it is eventually available. So we try that one-two combo, and he drives right by it like we don't even exist. I'm just trying to keep the game going, but we know the outcome here. Nothing's happening other than a loss. And yeah. Just do better next time. Uh, but yeah, aircraft carrier, very cool. It uh, has potential, definitely, and uh, I can't wait to see more work put on it. I will have another game on that map posted for, I think, Phantom or HSTV, one of those two. Yeah, HSTVL will get a aircraft carrier game as well. So, punch on a more familiar uh, map that you've probably played a lot of. And we'll see how well this works out. This is Domination. And you can just see, you know, at, at super long range, the 1-2 combo, it'll probably take like 7 or 10 seconds with the mines in flight for the mines to reach the target for you to then attack with your rocket on top of that. So yeah, the indicator indicates it's gonna take a long time. So you're clearly supposed to get closer so you can use it more effectively. But I quickly head out towards C point, which is gonna be the point of domination. And conveniently, this point has a lot of choke points. It works really well when you can cover up choke points. So I just try and make sure that we've got good mine coverage in the most obvious area that the enemy could drive up. And we wait. That one's mine. And of course, Blitz uses the TV missile that lands right on top of my friendly there. And oh, we got someone coming. Doesn't seem to take the bait or he feels the mine. So instead, I'm just gonna get behind him. Shoot him in the rear. Uh, looks like he's gonna put something down against us. So I'm trying to make him wanna go towards, but look, I cannot activate my missiles closer. But there is a lot of mines that they're driving through, so we're trying to get everything activated. Teammates aren't helping enough. Take cover! <laughs> uh, we're not short enough for that uh, solid object, I guess. But, you know, we... Uh, who am I kidding? That Nothing nothing good there. We, didn't, we barely did any damage. I guess we got an assist there. There is a... Uh, what is it? Um, R-Blast watching over, so potentially he can help from range. I'm not really feeling like he's going to do that very well from that position because there is so many, you know, electrical boxes or uh, concrete pillars that support that block line of sight there. 
plus most likely you won't see the health pull of the target so yeah you're just shooting blind but we approach of course and we're behind this kent i'm gonna send missiles i mean i'm gonna send my mines out before i missile okay enemies taken out we of course miss with our first shot on the other enemy but I do have a really great repair kit. Now note the UI elements, my mines that I have put in the world. There is a indicator for how much time will remain on the sort of the center right. And it also, I think it tells you how much are left up alive from that package of mines. So yeah, it, it informs you on how successful you've been in the past and how long they'll last in the world before you need to place them again. And I think even if you upgrade to the four, it'll still keep track of all four. But I don't know that for certain. I haven't upgraded to all four. All right. Well, Titan's coming in, and of course we miss. Let's just go for something that will slow his progress. <laughs> ah, the missiles. I would really like to be able to use them closer, but maybe they feel like that would be too strong. Like a point blank mine missile, oh, that'd be pretty deadly. But they could always make it do team damage to yourself. But enemy Kent stuck with his oh, nice ram, easy ram kill there. And yeah, the missiles exist in the world, so even if it indicates that it will it'll land beyond the object, if you activate the missiles and you drive the tank around and you change the orientation, it will affect the way that it it is uh, sent out, I believe. So you just got to be aware of that. And we got a little blitz. He's using his little artillery bombs. Hate you, blitz. <laughs> It's a really fun mechanic. I, he, everyone should try. He's basically the fire support no um, ability-based agent to my defender-based ability uh, agent. So I have respect for him trying to make that work, and hopefully it does eventually in the game. But we're just firing on Titan, who's, you know, hold down position, taking damage. He can't move, but we can easily damage him. We don't have enough energy to place our mines in the world. But I'm able to fire on this enemy, and he has to go through a choke point, basically. And that choke point is really deadly. But look at this recovery rate. You know, punch can literally punch, put everything on the line, drive through, ram, get out with 30%, and basically recover every 20 seconds. It's really nice, and it's really... It can be a really aggressive playstyle, and uh, I think it's fun for that. But I do think that punch requires upgrades to be successful, and yeah, I, I mean, I think that's true of all agents. Uh, I don't think anyone's base agent is as powerful as the upgraded agent. There might be parts of the agent that are, but not the whole thing. But yeah, that's punch. This uh, support defender with an uh, amazing repair kit. Uh, like the video if you like it. Leave in the comments what you think of Punch. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in.